Okay, let's take a look at sequence five. Here's the wiring of the control for sequence five. And here's my motor one, as indicated. Here's my motor two, as you can see on the top. Try to use anything to help you indicate which one is motor one, which one is motor two. I have decided to use some masking tape. So um, our power is already on. So now we're gonna start testing according to the task that we were given over here. Um, you get your task and then you draw your diagram. And once you have drawn your diagram here, the first and the task number one says, motor two can only be started 10 seconds after motor one. That then indicates that we must have a delay on timer on motor two. As you can see here, this is my, gonna be my coil for motor two. So starting my motor one, there we go. You can see the coil is energized and the contactor is in my delay on timer is on but i can't start motor two because the relay is not yet on there we go the relay is on as you can see by the green then you can start your motor two so we have passed task uh we've passed the first part of the task then we can tick off yes on um the first one and then we we'll go to number two motor one can only be stopped if motor two is stopped Motor one can only be stopped if motor two is stopped. So motor one can only be stopped if motor two is stopped. So basically, try to stop motor one. Nothing is happening because motor one can only be stopped if motor two is stopped. So we're gonna check why is that? Why is motor one only being stopped if motor two is stopped? As you can see, I've indicated here, motor two, the interlock for motor two is on my stop button for motor one. So this interlock, the 50, the normally open, the 52 and the 54 normally open for my motor two is wired to my stop of motor one. Hence, it will not stop motor one unless I stop motor two and then I stop motor one. Okay. So the last one is saying if emergency stop button is pressed or if any overload unit trip them both Sorry, if emergency stop button is pressed or if the overload unit trip them, then both motor one and motor two must stop. So if we press either overloads or the emergency stop button, then everything must then just switch off or basically then both um, our motor one and motor two contactors must switch on. I am saying motor one and motor two, but I am referring to contactors. Um, I am referring to the contactors because um, the manner in which the contactors are going to move or work is the way that the motor is also going to be getting energy. So let's go. Motor one. And then we wait 10 seconds for motor two because if motor two goes on before the 10 seconds, you have failed. So waiting for the delay on. There we go. Thank you. And then motor two is now in. So now we're testing if our overload is going to work. Uh, let's pick either overload let's try the overload you see including the time has been de-energized then motor one we wait for 10 seconds i could have put less time but let's go with 10 seconds let's wait for the 10 seconds there we go now we're going to be testing our emergency stop button to see if it's also working and connected there we go both of them then come out and then you'd have ticked yes, 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 